Hi, in this uh, last section, we'll uh, see some of the latest trends and verification, and then we'll do a wrap up of what we learned in this section. So we'll learn about what is accelerated simulation and emulation, and what is hardware plus software co-verification. So hardware accelerated simulation is an alternative method used especially at the higher levels of verification like a system or a full chip verification primarily because the simulation based verification tends to slow down as the size of design increases uh, so that's when at a full chip or an soc level since the design sizes are huge the simulations run pretty slow and that's why we look for alternative methods uh, this is again primarily because the simulator is still a software that runs on a host CPU which tries to evaluate your design and test bench at every cycle or every even change in your signal. So at a higher levels as an alternative what we do is like we try to move some of the time consuming part of the design to the hardware. So if you see this diagram on the left that shows like a set of modules which uh, represents your design implementation and you have a test bench component test bench which comprises all your behavioral components like stimulus generators checkers etc used to in the simulation environment so the most time consuming part of this whole simulation environment is the uh, design implementation in terms of modules because those are the one that needs to get evaluated at every cycle or on every uh, event change in the event change or every signal change so in this approach, what we do is like we take some of those time consuming modules and then synthesize and compile those into real hardware FPGAs so that they can run on a real hardware much faster. We still keep the test bench components uh, running on the host CPU and then we kind of devise some ways of communicating between the test bench components sitting on the software uh, simulator uh, talking to the uh, actual hardware implementation on the FPGA so that way uh, we can still gain speeds of maybe 10x to 20x of your simulation setup now this definitely comes up with its own challenges so as I mentioned the speed can be improved using this approach and we move the hardware components onto a real hardware system like FPGAs but then based on how the hardware software communication is it can still degrade your uh, speed especially if you if the between the hardware and software if there is a communication at say every clock cycle or on an every event change then this may not give you a lot of benefit in terms of speed up so the approach that is normally used is to abstract this hardware software communication to a transaction level rather than a cycle or a signal level in that case you don't need to communicate between the hardware and software at every clock cycle you only need to communicate at a transaction boundary so that is hardware accelerated simulation and even uh, even to improve further speeds we can also do a full mapping of the hardware into an emulator which can be an array of fpgs and that's what is called as hardware emulation the hardware emulation setup will look more like a real target system. Speed ups are possible to the best cases, maybe up to 1000 X of simulations. Uh, there can be several, uh, several uh, approaches used for doing a full hardware emulation. We can either synthesize your test bench if the test bench is written in a synthesizable fashion onto your emulator, or we can uh, set up configurations which looks like a real hardware system and then use some of the real stimulus generator that might be used for real silicon testing in both case, in either cases uh, debug is still a challenge on hardware emulation since we may not have a full visibility into the internals of the design and hardware emulation is typically used for co-verifying the hardware and the software together so now let's see what is hardware and hardware software co-verification. So as I mentioned in the very beginning, SOC or system on chip designs involves both a hardware development phase as well as a software development phase. So this diagram shows that. So at a high level, we come, come up with a system specification based on what the system has to do. And during the system design phase, we partition those specification into what has to be implemented in hardware versus what has to be implemented in software and then the two the two development gets like phased off on the one side you continue with the hardware development we define refine the hardware specs and then implement the actual design using an rtl and then synthesize to gates etc 
and on the other side the software development continues we refine further software spec and then defines like what has to go to our what has to go into the OS level, what has to go into the different layers of driver software and then we finally develop a software code and then these two together has to work on a real system. So now in both phases, the hardware development phase, we do functional verification as well as gate level verification to make sure the hardware is working standalone. And on the same side, software development involves software verification where we make sure the software works standalone. Uh, traditionally, we never used to do a verification of hardware plus software before we actually go to the real silicon in the lab. Whereas with the, with the design complexity increasing uh, with the recent SOC designs, it's kind of becoming more and more important to verify the hardware and software together before we get the actual first silicon because that can save a lot of uh, surprises in terms of silicon bugs and avoiding respins etc so so that's why in the recent soc designs hardware software co-verification is becoming more and more important uh, the co-verification will help projects to complete in shorter time with higher confidence since uh, since we do both hardware and software quality testing together before the actual tape out or before the actual silicon that gives you like much higher confidence in this approach so now let's, uh, that's all what I had in this section. So we'll do a quick section summary as to what we learned in this section. So we started learning as to like what is verification and why do we do verification in SOC or chip design flows. So verification is the process by which we ensure the functional correctness of design. And if you don't uh, ensure the fun design is functionally correct, it can lead to bugs in the silicon which can which might need like respins and costing like millions of dollars uh, also verification is becoming the most time consuming part or the most critical part in a chip design flow so that's why it is becoming more and more important uh, there are different methods we learned about simulation based verification formal verification and assertion based verification uh, we also did a comparison between directed testing approach versus random testing approach and we also uh, covered as to why what is coverage and what's the importance of coverage and especially in a random or a constrained random testing we also saw some of the recent trends the accelerated simulation or emulation as well as hardware software co-verification so hope uh, that kind of gave you a quick basics of the different verification concepts uh, we'll do one exercise in the next lecture to kind of uh, apply all of these concepts that we learned uh, for a real case study and that should help you understand these concepts like more thoroughly so let's uh, move on to that case study in the next lecture thank you